I've said this a number of times now. I think we know it. Electric cars, yes. I mean, they are making a difference. There's no question about it. But realistically, they make nowhere near as much of a difference as electric scooters or just any kind of small electric transportation. And we know the facts. The facts are this. Electric scooters are slashing oil demand. In fact, if you're one of the big oil producers, you would absolutely hate these things. Apparently, fossil fuel demand, as in oil demand, has been slashed by 1 million barrels per day. 365 million barrels per year, simply because of electric scooters. I'm not making this up. This is actually true. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Thanks for tuning in. You know, you know, in Taiwan, when I was there, I saw a lot of people riding around on electric scooters and they love them. They love them because over there, you have all these swapping stations. You can just drive your electric scooter and whenever your battery is getting closer to running out, you can pull over. There's everywhere places where you can literally pull a battery out of a wall there's a bunch of batteries in a wall and you take your battery out put the old battery in put your battery in your scooter drive away it's absolutely brilliant battery swapping works incredibly well in asia and well there's a lot more people in asia electric two-wheelers are reducing demand for fossil fuels by a million barrels a day says a new report electric scooters are clearly uh, far more important for the world's decarbonization, for cleaning our air, for making the world a better place than electric cars are. Maybe I should talk about them more often. What do you think? The reports estimate that uptake of electric scooters in countries such as China and even Southeast Asia, where they are a more common form of transport and legal in all regions of the country, unlike places such as Australia, where they've been uh, said to be illegal in many places, has seen them reduce demand for oil four times faster than electric cars and trucks. And this is in a country, I mean, China is electrifying its, its actual car fleet at a much faster pace than everywhere else in the world. Nearly 30% of all cars sold in 2023 in China were electric. So you can see here that if scooters are outpacing that by a factor of 10, reducing demand, by a factor of 10, oil demand by a factor of 10, you see just how important they are. And I think the Western world should stop demonizing electric scooters. I know there's been accidents, there's been crashes, but there's always going to be, doesn't matter what you do, if you get in a car, there could be a crash. Get on a scooter, it could be a crash. Walk down the street, it could be a crash. We just have to accept there's some form of risk when we move around and there's a lot of other people around us. The report cites the number of four-wheeled battery-powered vehicles on the world's roads, around 20 million passenger vehicles and 1.3 million commercial electric buses, delivery vans and trucks in 2022, paling in comparison to the 280 million electric scooters and electric motorcycles being ridden. Now, this is old news. There's a lot more electric cars. I believe there's close to 30 million electric cars now. Amazing the difference one single year makes in terms of electric car output. But the point is still this, 30 million electric cars versus now probably closer to approximately 350 million electric scooters. I've been saying for a long time, I've said this a couple of times on the channel, small electric vehicles like this are truly the answer. It's why I don't really like trains. I think that people would be better off riding around electric scooters or electric bicycles and turning those train lines into a street just for that purpose. That's what I think. But a lot of people, pretty much everyone that I've told that idea to disagrees with me. At a lower, much lower cost to buy and a much lower cost to run, electric scooters make sense for journeys everywhere, in every country of the world. 44% of trips in Australia are less than 10 kilometers. In the US, well, 60% of trips are less than 10 kilometers. You can get electric scooters now. In fact, most of them have 20 plus kilometers of range. So, you know, at least 12 miles of range, at least. In other words, you can get there and back for 60% of journeys with an electric scooter. And you don't have to fight the traffic. It's great. I, in fact, I really love my electric scooter. 
The sheer number of electric two and three wheelers has seen a fall though in appetite by 1 million barrels of oil per day. That equates to 1% of global daily demand for oil. That will change though. Over the next few years, global oil demand is said to likely fall by 10 to 20%. I think it's gonna be even more than that. Australia's daily oil consumption rate in September of 2023 was 1 million barrels. So actually 1 million and 58,000 barrels, which surprisingly is actually less than a decade ago. In fact, a decade ago here in Australia, we were consuming 1.11 million barrels in 2013. So oil consumption has actually declined in Australia, even though there's more people, more cars, uh, and obviously uh, more people driving cars on a daily basis, in fact, far more. Here's the thing. Australians, and not just Australians, but Europeans and Americans are using scooters, electric scooters, regularly. In, in fact, incredibly regularly. In Australia, our population is, we only have 24 million people, but 3.6 million people use an electric scooter every day. 3.6 million. That's a huge percentage. That's what, nearly 20% of our population is using them. Unfortunately, the government is actually trying to ban them. I think that's crazy. What are your thoughts? Now, the smaller, the relatively small number of electric cars on roads in the Western countries is, um, well, it means that electric cars are just making nowhere near as much of a difference as electric scooters. Here in Australia, 7% of all cars sold were electric in 2023. In America, that figure was relatively similar. In fact, nearly identical. In Europe, of course, that figure is higher, but it's not hugely high. It's about double that percentage. In China, much, much higher again, nearly 30%. So because electrification of cars is happening at a slower pace, much slower pace, the most important mode of transport in the world right now, clearly for decarbonization is electric scooters and countries should be funding this. Governments know this information. They should be focusing on stopping their funding of fossil fuels because they still are. The Western world is still doing this en masse and funding things like micro electric transportation. It unclogs the roads. It decreases, it decreases our need for having to repair massive costly repairs. It decreases our need for products that we just don't need. In Norway, 80% of electric cars, in fact, 85% of cars sold in 2023 were electric. However, according to Forbes, Demand for petrol and diesel in the country has declined by only 10% since 2017 to 62,000 barrels per day. So even though in Norway, uh, electrification has hit a staggering rate, unfortunately, oil consumption is only going down relatively slowly. The truth is here that to truly decarbonize the world as quickly as possible, we need to move our focus away from electric cars and focus on the simple the humble electric scooter. Now let me know what you think about this in the comments, guys. Thank you for watching.